Folks, there's so many pipes in this episode, you're going to feel like Mario. But we're going to kick off this Starbase summary with a little bit of housekeeping. As you know, we've been doing the multi-language tracks where you can listen to uh, original commentary done by different native language speakers. We had German and Spanish in there for a long time with Alex and Adrian, and uh, we recently added Dutch as well. But as soon as we really got into that, YouTube broke the feature. So we continue to record those tracks, but YouTube has seemingly, in an AI push, uh, made that feature we use for multiple tracks not work anymore. So we have been told by YouTube that that is going to be fixed. It's just not fixed yet, and they told us to wait a week or two to see if that comes back. But so we reach the international audience. Let's check in with Adrian and Alex real quick and get an explanation for folks who may not know what I'm saying. Hey zusammen, Adrian hier. Leider hat YouTube das Feature kaputt gemacht, dass wir andere Sprachen hochladen können. Und wir müssen leider warten, bis das Ganze gefixt ist. Aber sobald das der Fall ist, gibt es natürlich hier wieder deutsche Sprachausgabe. Bis dann. Buenas, soy Alex, el que le pone la voz a esto en español. Y resulta que YouTube no nos deja poner nuestras voces. Últimamente, en los últimos vídeos hemos intentado, hemos contactado con YouTube y parece que por alguna razón... No podemos, por eso no nos habéis escuchado durante los últimos vídeos en español. Esa es la razón. Estamos intentando a ver si se puede uh, resolver, así que esperaremos que eso sea pronto. Look, I don't speak either of those languages, but uh, I'm pretty sure I heard YouTube feature kaput in the German there. And Alex, in true Alex for fashion, uh, said a lot of Spanish words. But that's what's going on, folks. Uh, we are going to get those audio tracks back for you as soon as we can. Sorry for the extended intro here. But now it's time to grab your wrench and plumber hat and dive into this Starbase summary. Now, these first 45 seconds of footage have been a lot of detailed shots of the changes and modifications they've been doing over at the first pad, that original orbital launch mount, <laughs> like the measuring with the tape measure there, to uh, install plumbing that allows them to fill up a ship that is sitting on this with a ship adapter. You can see how the pipes sort of come out of the bottom there and go around the outside, go into that little framework, and then go up to where the ship quick disconnect plate will be. You can scroll back and look through that in detail if you're more interested there. Here is the adapter stand. Still have some welding happening. Down at the bottom of that, we see a lot of uh, plates that are being, to being installed here. And it looks like those plates are designed to channel that exhaust down so that it doesn't hit the top of the OLM. We're going to run over to Orbital Pad 2 really quickly. As you can see, it has a serious case of scafungus on it. I think they have a cream for that. But uh, they've been working hard over there at Pad 2. Heaven forbid anything happens to Pad 1 with their Wiley Coyote static fire solution that they've been working on. I'm pretty sure I saw some Acme crates sitting by the uh, side of all that work. But uh, trying to get this second pad online soother, sooner rather than later. They're not earning interest on it as it just sits there not launching rockets. So we see all of the work. Sees are getting us some good shots of all the different spots that they're doing the work here. Looking up underneath it there with all of that scaffolding. In this area, you see where they did some of that welding. We saw the heat pads on there in previous episodes uh, warming the material up so that they don't weld stresses into it. So here we're going to go ahead and tilt. It's not a pan. The tower's not laying down. Up Tower 2, the little tower in the background is Tower 1. But you can always tell the difference. Tower 2 is still shiny. I don't know if it has a completely different coating or what. There on the left-hand side of the tower, ship QD arm mounts, big hinges, I think, uh, or, or pins or whatever you want to call them, mounting points for that QD arm that'll swing out. And then at the upper right-hand side of the tower, you see the draw works where the cables come down. Of course, those bring the chopsticks, the, the mini chopsticks, up and down the tower. Some detailed shots in here. Had some gussets and plates and bolts and rivets. Here we're moving some pipes. Maybe we test fit some stuff. Maybe we needed to cut something else. Maybe that was the test fit. And uh, they're going to do some more work on the ground or make some changes before they put them back up there again. Another shot here. You don't see quite as much work from that angle. But here we're going to get another small pipe installed. I love it when they pick up those pipes and they just have one uh, strap sling load point. On it, they balance the center of mass of the pipe. I wonder how many times they're like, is this right? Nope, that's not the center. Is this right? Eh, no, that's not the center. Uh, when it's just a straight pipe, pretty easy. But when you get into more complicated curves and angles, it's a little bit more difficult to lift those things uh, in a balanced fashion, I guess you could say. 
Here, another shot at that static fire adapter welding the gap shut. Again, we don't want exhaust coming out of this, hitting the top of the OLM. There should probably be some flow problems there. Don't want to re reduce the top of the OLM. There's the <laughs> shuttle tanker with the liquid liquid oxygen delivery. We see these come in and out. You see oxygen refrigerated liquid and that 1073 yellow placard. Venting on the truck there is normal. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I like the gratuitous shots of the tanker in action. Some days I just want to, like, stand in that. I don't want to stand in that. Uh, that looks a little forceful. But the nice ground-rolling cloud, as long as you knew that it was just oxygen and you weren't trying to light anything on fire, uh, looks cool. Look, NASA Spaceflight, not responsible. Don't stand in clouds of oxygen. Heading up over to Mega Bay 2. We have the ship there. We continue to see work on the ship and the tiles. We've been seeing Raptors sort of coming and going in and out of the Mega Bays here. Not seeing anything on that lift right now. The question is, why is the lift up? Like, I feel like there should be a person on that lift if the lift is up. We're going to run back over to the launch site again. There's the shorty chopsticks on pad two for scale. Spot the workers up on the top of the chopsticks. Also, expect maybe that big crane is going to crawl over and help lift the static fire adapter onto pad one. We're waiting for that uh, crane to move over. Maybe it's going to be that crane. I'm actually not sure if they have another crane that could do it. Temporary ship kit. We're looking through the pipes here. That's what we're doing. I did say it was a Mario episode. What do you say? Mario? Mario? Whatever. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, there is that odd skeletal framework. I'm really curious. You see them welding the plates on to protect the other stuff. I wonder if this skeletal framework is also going to get a uh, plating on it to keep the exhaust gases from getting on the insides. Now, curiously, you don't see plating on the ship QD arm. Why not? Ship QD arm there swings out of the way. So uh, even though you have all that external exposed plumbing, maybe you don't have to armor that up because you could just get it out of the way. There's a SpaceX logo on the office building. Certainly we're not cleaning the windows at this time of night. Huh. Got a couple Ship 42 and 43 nose cones there. In previous videos down in the comments, y'all pointed out some snake plants. I think they're going to need a lot more of those to generate oxygen for a trip to Mars. I saw that YouTube video. <laughs> There's Ship 41's nose cone. Ship 40 and 41's nose cone. Oh, I like how the, the bays or pillars or whatever. 11R, 11F, 11P. You know, I have never noticed those. Now's the time you tell me those have always been there. You just don't actually watch the video. I do. It's, I, I watch the video. I just talk about a lot of interesting things. And every video is jam-packed with whatever. <laughs> Massey's test site up the road a little way. Cleanup continues here. That is the can crusher test stand. 18.1 test tank in there. And let's see if we get some shots. Oh, there's a truck leaving. Like You don't really get the scale of that until that semi-truck starts to drive out of the driveway. And you're like, oh. That, that tent and that structure is actually pretty big. There's a clamp getting pulled out. Flying with the crane there. Look how they have the uh, scaffolding up there just for safety. It's almost like being used as safety railing, right? Quick shot of the assembly yard, the production site, rocket garden there. And then we're going to run all the way up the road to Pad 2's orbital launch mount. From the other side, we saw a lot from the uh, the southern side. Western side over there. This is going to be from the northern side with the cars going past you on Highway 4 in front of that shot. There's another shorty shot of Pad 2's chopsticks. Opened there because you only see one chopstick. It's, it's What's the singular of chopstick? I guess it's just chopstick. It's not. There's, there's nothing interesting about that. Have some plastic sheeting blowing in the breeze. And then pad two construction continues here. Looks like we've got some ground concrete preparations happening there. Forms and rebar being put in. This is probably, I'm going to guess, be for a wall or gate area. Let's hop back over here because it looks like we've flown some pipes back up to there. We've got two pipes and the little skinny pipe going up that temporary structure now. I, it's funny how that structure is not completed in the back. I, why would you do that? Like, is there some flexibility you need by not completing that back part of the structure? But that is actually coming along quite nicely. Instead of just an empty structure, 
you actually have some pipes that could compa- ca- carry some useful stuff up to the ship. <laughs> we have, I like this. I told you. I told you at the beginning of the episode. Another pipe installed. I think we were doing the uh, center of mass calculations there. We got it sorted out. Crane's going to lift the pipe up. Worker's going to climb the ladder. <laughs> nice. Jack actually following. This is t- when rockets aren't launching down at Starbase. You have to practice your tracking by tracking pipes on cranes. <laughs> gotta gotta keep the old tracking muscles exercised. But we'll fly this over to the back of that temporary structure. Let's get it into position. Oh, are we actually... We're inserting that at a different angle into the launch mount. Or, sorry, into the the booster quick disconnect. Backside there. That's interesting. So maybe that's something that comes up and is normally used on the booster, but it can be used right there. Uh, And they just teed it off or something inside of that. Look at that. Icicles at Starbase? You've got to be kidding me. That's a rare sight. I don't know. I, I, that's the first I ever recall seeing icicles hanging off of stuff. We see frost all the time, but that was actually... They, they look like they were hanging tight to the bottom of the pipe there, so that would be a stalactite. A lock stalactite. It's not locks. It's humidity from the atmosphere, I would guess. Ah, here's some news that's been coming out. You can see some survey flags there as they were marking off the ground that they plan on using for that air separation plant. It's over to the north side of the turning circle. And I am super curious. We've seen some diagrams of footprints. There you can see little flags actually down on the ground. It's curious to me that they're going to build the air separation plant literally right on the water. What? Look at this production value. We're driving past recording. There's ship 39. There's ship 40 and ship 41 behind it. The welding robot there in the background as well. Do we have more labels coming? Let's see. Ship 42. Ship 43. I mean, this is just an assembly line in there, y'all. It's actually really cool. Here's more close-up shots of tank farm venting. You can see frost on the ground as well. Actually, it looks like it's, should I use the word, flowing out across the ground and then enough of it to not instantly evaporate and cause that sort of extended vapor area. There's that static fire adapter on it. It looks like they left it in the wrong part of town. You can tell the wheels have been removed from it. It's got graffiti all over it. I'm pretty sure there's some concrete blocks under it. I'm kidding. (laughs) Let's back off and look at Orbital Pad 1. (laughs) <laughs> That's like clearly protected by SpaceX security. Nobody jacked any parts off of that thing. Another shot of that temporary quick disconnect plumbing. It really is shaping up. The flanges there. They've got everything connected. You can see some wells that they've put in. Maybe we can get some close-ups of the labeling on those pipes. But all coming together, I think we're getting close to where we would actually see a quick disconnect plate in there somewhere. Now, is this going to move and attach to the ship is a big question. Remember, they don't have to quick disconnect it during a ship's static fire. The ship's not supposed to take off, right? So they could just attach it and leave it attached for the fill and drain operations. Uh, You don't need to make it more complicated with these automatic moving parts, right? Anyways, we will see how they solve that problem. And here, near the end of the video, we're going to run over to the Gigabay Foundation work. We continue to see those big uh, augers in work. If you want a complete explanation of how those things work, our Cape flyover video came out yesterday. We'll put it here at the end of the video so you can click over on the left-hand side. And in the video, we explain how they're using that same sort of equipment all the way over at the Space Coast for the Gigabay at Kennedy Space Center. Hey, it's been Starbase... <laughs> summary i'm not going to try to sing the mario song but i appreciate y'all watching thank you so much for keeping up with what's going on at starbase and we will see you nerds later